Hello, and welcome to the Book Speaks podcast, where the book speaks for itself. I'm your host, Benjamin Douglas, and this is the show where each week I read a chapter from a different indie author. Thanks for joining me for today's reading. Welcome back from Iowa. Thanks for joining me for episode number 17 of the Book Speaks podcast, where the book speaks for itself. Deset! We are rounding the corner on 20 episodes coming right up uh, <laughs> by the end of this month. So getting kind of excited. I am back home in Iowa, back from vacation. I'm very happy to be back in my little office with my normal audio setup. I don't feel like I need to whisper anymore, which is a relief. Um, today's episode is going to be rather short and sweet, which seems altogether fitting, because today we're discussing short stories, and we're going to hear a reading from author J.R. Nichols of her own short story, Outlook Good. So before I say anything else, I'm going to begin, as I often do, by reading the author's Amazon bio. This is J.R. Nichols' Amazon author bio. J. R. Nichols was born in Detroit and now resides in Flint, Michigan. Her flash fiction has won several online contests and has been featured on the No Extra Words podcast. And that is all she wrote. So, <laughs> brevity is the soul of wit. <laughs> Thus spake Shakespeare. <laughs> We're going to apply that both to the stories and to the bio today. Um, hi, JR. You know, I'm from uh, Michigan as well originally, so I feel akin to you in some way. And I hope that you'll be able to also say now that your flash fiction has been featured on the Book Speaks podcast. But, you know, no pressure. <laughs> If you go to J.R. Nichols' Amazon page, you're going to see she does have a novella for sale on Amazon. It's called Second Chance. This is um, book one of the Summersville saga. It looks really lovely. It's a science fiction. It's only $2.99. Um, it's got a really fun looking... Here, let me just look it up really quick. It's got a cool looking cover. Real time, people. This is the drama of um, radio. I'm going to read you. I'm going to do something new. I'm going to read you the blurb for this story. Mariah Walker is struggling to cope with the death of her son Joshua. Her life consists of working and visiting his grave. So when a mysterious gentleman appears and offers Mariah the one thing she wants more than anything, the chance to see her beloved boy again, she is convinced that he is a product of her grief-stricken imagination. But Mariah cannot explain the series of events that follow. Second Chance is the first story in the Summersville saga, which chronicles the efforts of three alien races to survive invasion and unrest, and the first contact between them and the citizens of each of the world's Somervilles. Wow, sounds cool. I'm gonna read the, the categories. It's in science fiction and fantasy. It's in genetic engineering. Um, it, it looks a lot like, to me anyway, there's this like trope in a lot of shows that, okay, so I'm not really a big cable watcher. I have Netflix and I have Hulu. So I watch uh, mostly Netflix. There's, there's, there's these tropes in these shows where, like, a generation of kids goes missing or people goes missing, and then they, like, come back from the dead. There was there was some European show. If you know what I'm talking about, then you're, like, nodding your head and being like, yeah, it's this. I don't know what it's called. There was, like, some European show that, that, that was about that, like, a decade ago or something. And then in the U.S., and I think maybe in Britain, they made a couple of, like, copycat shows. I don't know about the popularity of those, but... um. There's definitely an appetite for this cross-section of science fiction and paranormal. Um, for me, I think the closest thing was Fringe. I watched Fringe for a little while. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't love the acting. 
<laughs> a tough criticism of the younger characters. So I didn't I didn't stay with it. But um, there's definitely, you know, Black Mirror is kind of a big thing on Netflix right now. It's kind of tapping into that old um, Outer Limits Twilight Zone vibe. This sort of cross-section in, in specular fic of, of a little bit of horror and a dash of fantasy and a touch of paranormal and and it's all kind of under this umbrella of science fiction so i haven't read this novella by jr nichols but i'm just telling you to me it sounds like that <laughs> I don't know if that's useful or not um it does look really cool though second chance it's 2.99 go check it out if you're interested it's also in kindle unlimited so you can read it that way if you go to jr nichols actual website, and as usual, I'll leave links to her Amazon page and her website in the show notes. You're going to see something interesting, which is that J.R. Nichols gives you a bevy of free stories on her website. Not like sign up for a newsletter or pay 99 cents. You, I mean, you can sign up for her newsletter as well here, um, but just a bunch of free stories, short stories. So I want to talk today a little bit about short stories. What the heck's a short story? How is it useful for indie authors? Are you doing them? Are you putting them out? Are you seeing success? What's your story with short story? I came across the indie author revolution just as KU2 was rolling out, <laughs> which was kind of the quick breaks on a little short story revolution, especially in erotica. Uh, if you've been around the indie author community, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There was this big thing in, I don't know, like 2014, 2015. When did KU1 come out? I don't know off the top of my head. But there was this big movement to like write 3K to 5K word erotica shorts and make it big. And apparently a few people did. Um, and, and some of them have retained some place. But then KU2 came out and basically, instead of you getting paid... A certain amount per title when someone downloaded it in Kindle Unlimited, now you get paid per page reads, which sort of favors longer titles, right? We've been through this uh, over the last couple of years. Now that's not to say that you can't still succeed with short stories, because there are people who do, but the, there was a break on the mass movement towards short. I've been hearing in the buzz on Facebook and keyboards and all over, you know, conflicting opinions about the value of writing short. I'm a big fan of the Sell More Books show. If you listen to that show at all, you know, of course, that Jim Kukrell is always trumpeting, oh, it's going short, it's going short. The trend is people read shorter and shorter and shorter. Before you know it, we're going to be reading flash fiction in tweets on our cell phone, right? That's the, the big thing he thinks is going to happen. Well, flash fiction is nothing new. <laughs> flash fiction has been around for a long time. Stories that are just, you know, 100 words or less sometimes. Um, but its marketability that way might be new based on the technology. I don't know. There have been a number of studies lately, though. And um, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll run on onto the 20 books to 50K group where I saw one recently. Grab one and put a link to it in the show notes so you can see what I'm talking about. There have been some studies that have shown that uh, successful indies are writing long because readers like long. And in, in last week's episode, this week's episode rather, of, of the Sell More Book Show here in July of 2017, Jim even fessed up and said, you know what, maybe, maybe it's me. Maybe I just don't like to read long. So my perspective is skewed. He kind of admitted Look, I don't know, but I'm, I'm more inclined to agree with what Brian said in response to that, Brian Cohen, which was that I don't think there's one type of reader. I don't think that everybody either likes short or likes long reads. I think that there's a smorgasbord, I'm paraphrasing now, a smorgasbord of readers, <laughs> and now I'm extrapolating from what he said, and, and that um, whatever length you write, if you write well, you're going to find an audience. Yeah, that resonates with me. That seems a little more to have some common sense. So I want to know from you, what are you doing with shorts? There was a big movement a couple of years ago when Chris Fox came out and trumpeted the short story mailing list magnet. It wasn't his idea. It wasn't original, but he really was a figurehead for it. And that became a big thing that everyone's doing now. I myself 
have a 7,000 word mailing list magnet that you cannot get anywhere else. It's called The Trials of EO. It's a prequel story to, to my Starship Fairfax science fiction series. You can only get it if you sign up for my mailing list. Hopefully that's a mailing list draw. A lot of people are writing these and putting them on Insta Freebie, of course, um, to try to garnish, you know, tens of thousands of subscribers to their email lists, which is a whole other topic that I don't know much about. Um, <laughs> my email list is quite small. By the way, join my mailing list. <laughs> Get a free copy. Back on back on track here. Some people use them as um, interspersed throughout releases. I remember in episode one of the show, you might recall I talked about Michael Anderley doing that. And I also talked about Timothy Ellis in uh, episode number three. He has done the same thing. He's experimented with shorter titles released in between longer titles to keep the new release cycle fresh, to keep his name on the new release lists, right? And, and authors have seen some success with those. I've also heard other authors that I respect and admire quite a bit, of course I always talk about Lindsay Baroker, um, kind of decry the value of shorts because, uh, for example, Baroker has a number of shorts that are just sort of tangential to her Emperor's Edge series. <laughs> like she has a, I think like a honeymoon vacation story about the two main characters. A oh, spoiler alert, sorry, <laughs> you haven't read those. And um, she's kind of, she's kind of, you know, wishy-washy about those on the science fiction and fantasy marketing podcast, by the way, is what I'm referencing here. She's sort of given the impression, to me anyway, that she um, didn't see a whole lot of ROI on those short stories. And then you have crazy outliers like T.S. Paul. <laughs> One of those guys that got in early um, to be coached by Michael Anderley and has done quite well for himself who writes primarily what we would call short stories and sells them for $2.99 and has just made a killing, apparently, um, you know, in both science fiction and especially in urban fantasy, paranormal. So um, there's a whole swath of success and failure with short stories. I don't know necessarily that it's a key or a bad thing. It's just another tool like any others. Uh, I also have a free short story called Totaled which I wrote specifically to get into an anthology, and it did. That anthology is called The Officer. You may remember if you've been listening to the show, I've been plugging these shamelessly, I'm sorry. <laughs> By the way, Total is perma-free on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble, and The Officer is 99 cents on a whole bunch of vendors. So that's another use for a short story. You can get into an anthology with other authors, try to get some cross-pollination, um, get other readers that way. Yeah, short stories, um, they're, they're quite old, aren't they? I remember in high school reading The Most Dangerous Game as an example of the short story form. <laughs> and uh, my dad once bought me an anthology of O, a collection of O. Henry short stories. Um, short stories that have a twist at the end by this, this famous American author, O. Henry. Uh, uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Um, short stories, you know, short stories useful a lot of the time historically because they can be published in periodicals, which leads us to another type of short, which is the serial. And there was a big serial craze also during KU1. A serial, by the way, different from a short story because a short story is a complete story. A serial is a little bit more like a part of a novel if that makes sense. Or a better analogy really is um, a collection of serials is like a season of a television show and each serial is like an episode. In fact, some people call their serials episode one, episode two, episode three grouped into a season. Makes a lot of sense. And those can be, you know, like 10K to 15K words. Um, hey man, these go way back, long before Kindle. <laughs> One of my favorite authors, Alexandre Dumas. I love the D'Artagnan romances, the Three Musketeers, all the way to you know the Vicomte de Bragelonne. Um, I love I love all of his books. A lot of those were published as serials originally, just a chapter at a time, in a periodical, one at a time. Um, so this this goes way way back. Using short stories as audio is a transition into a new subject here, 
What are you doing with audio that's helping you? Joanna Penn is kind of a figurehead and a beacon, I would say, for the indie author community because she's such an authoritative voice and because she's so interested in futurism. And she's been talking a lot on her show, The Creative Pen, about audio. Uh, part of this is because she got uh, <laughs> the A-L-E-X-A AI from Amazon, and um, she talked on her show about how that has changed how she listens to podcasts and audiobooks. Um, so it's changing probably how our our readers and listeners, really, the consumer, the everyday consumer, experiences our content as well. Hosting a podcast, for example, is one way to try to um, explore that arena, which is exactly what I'm doing with this audio gig. And I like to think that uh, authors who are featured on this podcast are in the long term going to see some favorable results from that as I gain an audience. As you listen and you go back to the backlist and you say, oh, 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 Patty Jansen. That's interesting. Yeah, um, I've been seeing her name a lot. I hadn't read anything, but now that I've heard this chapter of Ambassador seeing read, I'm really kind of interested. I think I'm going to go buy some audiobooks, if you're a listener, of Patty Jansen's books, right? Um, so here we are in audio and short story. Back to J.R. Nichols. Not only has she posted the short stories on her website, but some of these she has posted audio readings for. So now we come full circle. I first encountered J.R. Nichols in the Facebook group 20 Books to 50K, where a discussion was taking place regarding the use of reading your own stories or excerpts from your stories, putting the audio up online, and seeing if that was a marketable tool, seeing if that was useful at all for garnishing new readers or as, you know, cool freebies for your mailing list or what that could be used for. And J.R. Nichols chimed in and said, yeah, I've been, I've been doing readings of my short stories. I put them on SoundCloud and then they're available on my website. So I contacted her and I said, hey, <laughs> let's do this. Actually, I think I might've put a cattle call out on the post and she might've responded. But either way, um, what I'm featuring from J.R. Nichols today is not my reading, it's her own reading of this story, Outlook Good, which is a short story. It's punchy. It's got a cool hook ending, just like an old O. Henry story. Um, and she produced the audio herself. So here are a couple of cool things about producing audio yourself. You own the rights completely. I had to be very clear about asking J.R. Nichols for specific permission to use this audio on the show <laughs> because I'm not just doing a reading. Uh, this is actually her content. She owns not only the story, she owns the rights to the audio. And she was gracious enough to, to sort of informally grant me the rights to use this on the podcast. Uh, but I can't like sell it or market it like it's hers, you know, um, same for you. If you do an audio reading of your own content, you own that. That's yours, uh, which is a little different than worrying about, ooh, am I going to go exclusive with ACX? Or am I going to take lower royalties and try to get in with these other people? <laughs> Just record it yourself if you have the capability. Uh, if you have a decent reading voice, if you have any acting training, if you have the technological know-how and the ability to get some equipment, there is some investment there on the front end, but I suspect that as audio grows, that investment is going to pay off quickly, very quickly. The most uh, prohibitive thing that I hear about producing audiobooks is um, paying narrators, which apparently can get quite costly. Um, again, on the Creative Pen, there was an episode recently where someone came on to talk about audio rights, uh, and they were discussing this very issue. But if you have the ability to narrate well, and I don't mean narrate poorly, <laughs> we've all learned our lessons about homemade covers and 
putting a book out without getting an editor, I hope, by now. Um, now, if you, if you want to do an experiment, if you want to do like a, um, a, via, a, a minimum viable product, like a Michael Anderley style experiment, good for you. Good on you. Try that experiment out. My advice to you is to make sure before you put any time and effort and money into really pushing a market marketing push for your audio that you make sure it's a good product. Uh, but if you can do it, man, imagine over the next 10 years, 20 years, this could overtake ebooks. Maybe in 20 years, we won't have Kindles at all. Maybe we'll just be listening. So, um, yeah, something to think about getting into audio, dabbling, dipping your toe in the waters. J.R. Nichols is doing this. So I've um, blathered on long enough. Thank you for humoring me as I verbally explore <laughs> short stories and audio. Uh, please feel free to leave any comments in the comment section. I'd love to see this discussion grow. I find it very intriguing. Without any further ado, we're going to get on to J.R. Nichols' own reading of her short story, Outlook Good, performed and recorded by J.R. Nichols. Thanks for being here today. Check out the show notes for links, and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Outlook Good. Another short story by J.R. Nichols. Copyright 2017. Articulate Expression. Production Copyright. 2017 Articulate Expression Read for you by the author Another Affair I couldn't summon the energy to cry. I didn't even care enough to be angry, to be honest. But I told him that if it happened again, I'd leave. Until now, I'd played nicely, preserving his reputation with the elders of the church playing the part of the well-loved wife in front of my in-laws. And it wasn't as though keeping a lid on the affairs hadn't benefited me as well. On the one hand, divorcing Jordan would make my life less complicated. I'd be free. Free of his lies, free of the never-ending wondering about whether he'd found someone new to sneak around with. On the other hand, I knew leaving him would mean I'd have to return to the workforce. My current situation was pretty comfortable. We'd never had children, so Jordan's salary was enough to keep a suburban roof over our heads, manicured nails on my hands, and designer jeans on my backside. Meanwhile, I was ten years out of the workforce with no college degree. If forced to make it on my own, it was doubtful I'd be able to keep living the lifestyle to which I'd grown accustomed. And really... The ideal of punching a clock and answering to some doofus in a suit held very little appeal. I sipped my coffee and considered my options. Just on the other side of the window next to my desk, the birds jostled for position on the feeder. I stared at them but did not really see them, my mind wrestling with the decision I felt I must make. As if sensing my distress, our kitty, Magic, began weaving himself in and out of my legs, his signature move for whenever he desired stroking and attention. I smiled as I scooped him up and sat him on the desk, remembering a happier time in my marriage. Jordan and I had adopted Magic 8-Ball, Magic for short, on a lark after consulting one of those very devices we'd just picked up at a yard sale. The kittens had been mewing and frolicking in a cardboard box at the end of the driveway, which sported a hand-printed sign. Free to good home. Should we take a kitten home? I'd asked. Jordan, reading from the window on the eight ball, had replied, Without a doubt. We'd laughed and kissed, and then together we'd selected the most serious-looking of the kittens. We'd named him Magic in honor of the predictor that had secured his spot in our family. Magic had been my constant companion during Jordan's long business-turned-pleasure trips. His shiny black fur had been soaked many a night by the tears that fell as I stroked him, crying in our bed. Now he was here, offering comfort to me in this hour of decision. 
As I stroked him, I smiled at the intensity with which he stared at the birds hopping around on the feeder. His tail flicked back and forth. His ears twitched. I'm not sure what to do, Magic, I said to the cat. Should I leave him? Almost immediately, the cat turned to me and said, Without a doubt. I flinched and blinked twice. The cat did not look at me again, but continued staring out the window at the birds. Did that just happen? I wondered. He'd never spoken to me before, nor has he since, though I often pepper him with questions as he watches the birds at the feeder from the window of my new apartment. The End This concludes another episode of the Book Speaks podcast, where the book speaks for itself. Thanks for joining me, your host, Benjamin Douglas, for another indie author reading. If you liked what you heard, be sure to visit http colon slash slash thebookspeakspodcast.wordpress.com for more episodes and for links to the author's website and the author's Amazon author page in the show notes. If you'd like to follow me on my own author journey, you can find me at http colon slash slash benjamindouglasbooks.wordpress.com. And of course, if you're an indie author interested in having your work featured on the show, or if you're interested in discussing having your book read and produced by me as an audiobook, feel free to contact me at benjamindouglasbooks at gmail.com. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you have a productive and enjoyable weekend.